the first of the three artworks in this video is my new calendar painting for May, Month of the Serpent, based on what I chose for each month all the way back in 2004. It was back in 2006, I believe, that I created the Jewel Cobras as a rare magical earth elemental creature, long ago originally for my palace getaway story, which is also a location, but I've expanded it elsewhere and modified it a bit since then. I took my time to do a very detailed line art, putting each individual scale. Note that the time lapse here has been sped up in different sections even more than the initial time lapse due to just the high level of details. I used a certain amount of mirroring and duplication, but each individual scale along the main body was hand inked in. It took quite a while, but I felt it was worth it for the overall artwork. I actually had to get some advice from someone else about what to do for the background because I was so focused on the cobra. I gathered various reference using my VizRef app. I gathered reference for the background, but I also got at reference of actual emerald gemstones to help me paint the jewel cobra in more realistically. Back in the original lore for jeweled cobras, they only lived about 250 years but shed their skin often. Both in the original and new version of the lore, they actually shed three-dimensional permanent gemstones when they shed their skin, unlike snakes which just shed the outer layer of their skin. Then they grow magically larger. I've decided it makes much more logical sense, or just feels correct, for them to be immortal unless killed, or perhaps have a long lifespan such as 10,000 years. I believe there should be different sub-varieties and versions found on different worlds and dimensions, however, not just one version for all places. All of them are fully sold and sentient, they're basically people, they talk telepathically, and they have telekinesis with precision, which it takes the place of having any hands. They also tend to have additional psionic powers and sometimes also magical powers. I have jewel cobras from older stories that are main characters, and I intend to continue using jewel cobras. Interestingly, when I went back, it turned out my original artwork of a jewel cobra was an emerald one, but I actually rolled randomly on one of my gemstone charts to come up with emerald, so it was actually more of a coincidence. I used different texture brushes in this artwork, as well as smooth soft round brushes and air brushes to get different effects in here. Often for the night sky, when I do any sort of space scene, I use my previously downloaded star and nebula brushes, which I find very fast, helpful, and fun to use when doing night skies. As I was less inspired to do the background, I found it to be the most difficult part of the painting, but it wasn't that hard. Still, I think I could have done a bit of a better job on it, but I'm happy with the painting. After all, the focus is, in fact, on the cobra. This entire year I'm doing a sort of similar, happy, magical creature version for every month, and this one fits in well. I made sure to add the bluish tones reflected in the sands from the sky, and some nice emerald green, as if the two bright moons in the sky are creating enough light for the emerald scales to create reflected light in the sands nearby in an artistic way. This next artwork is a Ross Draws study. Originally sourced from Instagram, Dreen is one of his three color dodge princesses. She is said to be the eldest of the triplets. There is also Wish and Miracle. Celebrating five years of color dodge, it was originally a contest for prizes that ended April 24th. But for me, I was never interested in entering the contest. I just want to do the study and feel safe posting the study online with permission, as this is part of a Draw This In Your Style contest. As I usually, almost obsessively, prefer long hair, I believe I was most inspired by Dream. For me, the pose, flow, and cloud-like qualities of her hair was extremely beautiful, so I definitely wanted to capture that in mind, even though I was going to change the pose a bit. I also decided to look up a lot of different reference to help, but I didn't look up too much reference, just a bit to help with the posing in general. I also decided that it's definitely not a direct copy study I'm doing here, but more of a literal draw this in my style, so that I can try to draw it more the way I would draw it, which included deciding to add dark pupils. Most of the time, I prefer to have pupils in the eyes, as well as obvious eyelashes if they're present. I adjusted a lot to get the sizing and proportions more correct, and I used several digital techniques to help. I remember I used more soft brushes in this process, including my downloaded Awesome Brush, the softer version I custom created, as well as Pablo Peruzzi brushes, versions of basic HRB soft, so hard round brush soft. I looked at where the colors landed on the color wheel, but used the color picker tool to get the colors correct, and I didn't use any actual color dodge, but imitated it by painting it through the process. 
Next is another in my series of calendar artworks. This is for the upcoming month of June. I decided to do a raptor based on a small sketch I recently done in a sketchbook. This dromaeosaurid is not a real species, but one that was created fantastically. However, it is more of an imaginative realism design that uses real knowledge of paleontology and studying dinosaurs in order to make a very plausible species. I haven't actually named this species of raptor yet, though I eventually plan on doing so and adding it into particular worlds. I spent a lot of time doing additional study and research, gathering reference. Part of the reason I did this painting wasn't just as a painting for the month of June, but also because I really wanted to study the sort of dappled, pleasant, glowing lighting that is present in certain artworks and even photographs of real forests. A glowing sunlight dapple lighting that involves pleasant colors, shapes, and forms. So I gathered a lot of different real photographs that fit this description, as well as primarily art studies, including reference from certain Ghibli movie backgrounds and other artists I enjoyed. I wanted to keep it more of a simplified realism, so not 100% detailed realism, but still more on the realistic side, especially in terms of the way the lighting would work out. I'm working in lots of different layers and doing a lot of different tests. I also go over the sketch a lot and make a lot of corrections. As you see, I change the eye many times until I'm happy with the finalized design. Because I'm not doing an actual paleo reconstruction, but actually a realistic creature design, I'm able to make changes as I want and not worry about being inaccurate to fossil source material. This is a plausible paleo art, not a real paleo art based on an actual extinct animal. I'm trying to work in different shapes and forms, and at certain points I stepped away and came back to the painting after doing other research and after taking breaks so that my eyes could look at it from a fresh viewpoint. At some points during this process, I was having a lot of fun, and at other points I was getting really frustrated, so sometimes I stepped away. I made sure that the design had certain features that are more plausible to real-world dromaeosaurids. I decided to make the eyes very large because I prefer that and it matches my series. I also made sure the hands couldn't pronate, so they have to face towards each other as if they're clapping, not twist the wrist so it can face towards the ground, which is something that raptor dinosaurs could not do. I also kept it quite feathered, although I do think that's also beautiful, so I wanted to do that anyway. And I made sure to make realistic, more camouflaged coloration due to the fact that as a predatory animal, it's more likely to have a camouflaged coloration when you look at birds of prey. June is month of the raptor, which also means month of the dromaeosaurid. So it's actually a version of a dromaeosaurid that I use every time I do the month of June. June is also my birthday month, and in general, raptor dinosaurs are overall one of my most favorite animals of all time. I'm going through carefully and trying to start getting the lighting more correct at this point, even though I have a lot more work to do on the background. I'm really starting to focus in on those important highlights and that dapple light effect. This process involved a lot of thinking and feeling what I wanted the picture to look like, while simultaneously looking at my references and learning what I could from them. Really trying to study in how artists did that, and how real-life photographs showed things depicted in a way to get the painting the way I wanted it to look. There's a lot of focus here on the overall composition and creature design, but also I really, really wanted to study to get the lighting correct and the beauty of the piece to look the way I wanted it to. Here I start stylizing and brightening in the highlights, adding in a lot more detail into the background. I'm not going for 100% real, I'm going for better than real. I'm trying to get things to look in a stylized way, simplified and yet detailed enough. I'm going over things and working out exactly what needs to be done. I added some streaky glows in the background and deepened some of the shadows working around. I used different layers, but a lot of stuff is actually painted on the same layer you might not expect. I didn't use too many layers. I realized an orange glow and a bright white glow were absolutely necessary. After studying my references, I really looked at the way the light looked. I really thought about how I wanted it to feel and how the light should look. So I started adding orange glows in and brighter, more yellowish light, as well as a slightly whitish yellow light. I ended up making the orangey tones more vibrant, making the shadows more of a vibrant brownish tone with a bit of greenishness in there for the reflected light from below, but keeping it more on the feeling warm and glowing side. Then 
I used softer airbrushes to put more light literally in the air surrounding the head of the dromaeosaur. I was also going in and adding more sharp plant details, which I noticed as a beautiful feature in a lot of the artworks I was looking at. I made sure that the highlights were bright enough, the shadows were dark enough. I upped the contrast and started adding detail. After coming back after a day and being still unhappy with it, I added these dark, harsher ferns in, which I think really tied the piece together. I also added in many darker and more sharp, smaller plant details spread around. I think things were looking a little too fuzzy and indistinct, and adding a few more distinct, darker colors and plant details and shadows in really made it look more finished and complete. Here's the final piece. I'm actually quite happy with it. Once again, that's all for this video. If you like my videos, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell to all notifications so you will know when a new video comes up. I aim for new videos every Wednesday, but sometimes life happens and things are delayed. I hope that you enjoyed this video and will see you with another one very soon.